Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bits of Business podcast. I am your host, Munila Odinsi, and today I am so excited to be joined by two special guests. Our first one is Naomi, a teen leader from Nigeria, who will be helping me interview Mr. Temi Dial Onyosu, a entrepreneur, director, and investor from Nigeria, who is the founder of company Space in Africa and has been recently listed on the Forbes 30 Under 30 Africa list. Temi Dial's interests are quite literally out of this world. Being intrigued with the space industry from a young age, Temi Dial is producing massive change in the intersection of business, space, and technology in Africa. Yet the road to his current success has not been straight. So without further ado, let's hear the story of Mr. Temi Dial on Yosu. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it start off, um, we'd love to start with an icebreaker. So I think Naomi has an icebreaker for us to do. So when you were a child, what was your biggest dream? Wow, that's that's an interesting question. So I, I had like, um, like an unconventional childhood. Um, I think it's probably different from what you guys had. Um, I grew up in Hoyo town in Oyo State in Nigeria. Um, and when I was growing up, uh, I didn't exactly have dreams. Uh, you, you know, I, I didn't have like a lot of people around that I could look up to. So I was just like, um, you know, a young child just trying to like, uh, you know, figure out what this life was for him. But I think when I was coming out of high school, I, I had the dream of manufacturing like an automobile that can actually fly, as well as, you know, also work like a ship, you know, sort of like a three-in-one, you know, kind of an engineering device. Um, and because of that, I wanted to study mechanical engineering in the university. So there's this thing called uh, JAMP in, in Nigeria. So that's like an exam that you take to enter the university. And uh, I took the exam. I selected mechanical engineering as the course that I wanted to study. Um, but as at the time that I was actually entering the university, uh, my interest changed completely. So I was, I was interested in something different, uh, which was space. Um, you know, I had read like, uh, you know, a couple of physics textbooks and I was just always fascinated by astronomy. Um, and I thought, hey, you know, what? this is actually cool. And you know, I didn't know anyone who has studied that. And I was like, huh, I should study something like this. Uh, but also, unfortunately, there was really no um, astronomy degree program um, around me then. So the closest thing to astronomy was meteorology, you know, which is like the study of weather. Um, and things like that. So that was how I opted to study meteorology. So sort of on that note, did you, were you someone that would always like look at the stars or how did you, how did that interest in astrology and the space and just that industry as a whole develop? Yeah, so, you know, when I was younger, um, you know, during like the, the dry season, uh, you know, I lived in like a large compound with like uh, a big gate and fence and um, you know sometimes in the night instead of sleeping in the house we just like uh, bring our beds outside and then you know sleep outside and when you look up you're like looking at the stars you know and it was awesome like um, yeah so it was you know it was very fascinating it was like wow this is like very beautiful like I know in many countries today you don't get to like see the stars and how um, but in Nigeria, it was, it was like that. It was awesome. And I was really fascinated by that. And, you know, I had read that, you know, some people actually went to space, which is like very crazy. Um, yeah, but I, I wasn't exactly thinking of going to space. <laughs> I was just thinking about, um, you know, how awesome that was. And it was like, huh, if this can actually be achieved, then probably there's nothing I can't achieve. So uh, it was, it was kind of like, um, you know, an, an event that, you know, got me thinking about a lot of things and, you know, building my interest. So, um, so when I got into the university, I was, um, 
you know, I was interested in space, but there was no program like that in my university. And I, I, so I decided to start something related to that. Um, so I, I thought hmm, if I was interested in space, maybe there are other people on campus that are also interested in space. So I started a club. Uh, so I called it a uh, space club. And the goal was to find, you know, other students like myself I was interested in that were interested in, you know, similar things. And I was like, hey, we all come together and, you know, share ideas, maybe develop some cool stuff and, you know, look for mentors uh, and, you know, build a career out of this. So, so that was what I did. Um, and, you know, that was about 2012 or thereabouts. Uh, and, you know, by the time I was graduating from the university, I had grown the club to, you know, over 100 members. Uh, you know, we had done a lot of cool, awesome projects, uh, you know, that were even covered in like some of the national newspaper. Um, you know, so that was, that was kind of like cool. It was, um, it was sort of like the way I started my career. So you mentioned that coming into college, um, there wasn't really a specific major for space. So was there something like in your university experience, you mentioned that you started a space club and you did all of these things. So was there a moment where it sort of clicked that there may not be a specific major for this, but I can continue to pursue this interest. And because it's something that I'm passionate about, was that ever something that occurred to you in college or in university? Yes, exactly. You know, I thought, you know, there was no major on this and I, I knew there were very few people in the country that were experts in it. So, um, so I knew that I, I had to like go out of the university to like, you know, meet people and, uh, you know, like connect to prof professionals in the industry. And, uh, and that was what I did. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, sometimes you're like in an area where, um, you know, what you need is not like available. Uh, so you gotta like think outside the box. You gotta. Uh, so for me, I the goal was not to be like a local champion. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to be like um, like a space guy that was known in my university. I want to be like the space guy that you know people all over the world you know know. Mm -hmm. So so that was like the goal for me. So the goal was not to um, you know just like champion my university. I was like. You know, back then I was making friends from like across the world, uh, you know, people doing PhDs, uh, you know, professors and, you know, I was, I was learning and working with like a lot of old people back then. Um, and, you know, I was building network. So that was also very important. And I was doing a lot of volunteering work. Yeah, so that was, that was kind of like important. Uh, you know, when I was in like, uh, I think my third year, out there about. So I joined this organization called Space Generation Advisory Council, um, which was like um, an organization affiliated with the United Nations. Uh, so, you know, I was volunteering for the organization. Uh, by the time I was even graduating from the university, I, you know, I organized this, uh, this conference, like an African conference where people came from across the world to attend. And, you know, it was like awesome. Um, yeah, so the, the goal was not just to be like, you know, the guy the champion of the university, the goal was to expand my territory. Thank you for sharing. And then, so coming out of university, uh, you mentioned that you did a lot of university, in university. So coming out of university was starting a company in the space industry something that was immediately on your mind as something that you wanted to pursue? It clearly seemed like you had a strong interest in the field. Or did you sort of take the general path of like trying different things out, maybe interning places, having a normal job um, at a specific company, or did you want to start your own thing right away? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so when, when I was uh, doing my undergraduate program, I, I was actually running on like a, it was like a company, but it was not a registered company. Um, so I had learned how to write computer programming uh, from like a friend that was studying computer science. And, you know, I was like, you know, writing code for people. I was you know, making money on the side. So I sort of like had a company then, but it was just, 
I was the only one in the company. So you could call it like a freelance thing. Um, but I, so I knew that I was going to work in the space industry. It was kind of like my passion. I didn't exactly, you know, I didn't plan to start a company. I, I just wanted to work in the space industry. Um, but coming out of university, I realized that um, there are very few options for me. So as a Nigerian, for example, I can't get a job in like NASA or something, you know, which is like the talk of the time because I'm a Nigerian, I'm not American. Um, so I realized that I'm limited to, I'm sort of like limited to jobs in my country. So, and in my country, you know, there are no companies like space companies. It was just like the government space agency. So the, the option I had then was to get a job with the government, working on the government space program, which I was not interested in because I felt like it would not help my career working with the government. So then I figured that, okay, if I can't work for the government, that means I, I have to like find my own path. I have to set up something on my own. Um, so for like about a year, I was trying to like hack ideas on the kind of company that I could create. Um, so fortunately I had the network. I had the understanding of the industry, all of which I got from like volunteering for organizations. You know, and from running like the space club. So, uh, so I graduated university in 2016. Um, so in 2017, I was like attending like conferences everywhere. I was in Colorado Springs for um, for a conference called Space Symposium. And you know, at the conference, it was like I was one of the very few black people there. And I was, in fact, I think I was the only person from Africa. And you know, I was having a conversation with people asking them, you know, about Africa, like what they think about space program in Africa and all of that. And I noticed that they didn't know anything. So I, you know, I saw a gap and um, I saw that, you know, there was like a lot of information about the industry. And I thought, oh, you know what, I could actually create a company out of this. Um, so that was actually how I was able to start my company. But if you look at that, it was like from years of work, years of building network, uh, years of working in an industry that, you know, was sort of like difficult to understand. And I capitalized on all of that experience uh, to like start a company. Really interesting how sort of your uh, prior experience and your knowledge led to your starting this company. So can you tell us the story behind Space in Africa? How did the idea come and what did it take to make it reality? Because starting a company we all know is no easy fit. So along those lines, what do you say were the key elements for starting your company? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, okay, so let me tell you the story. I, in 2017, so I was living in a city called Akure in the southwest Nigeria. Uh, that was where I had my undergraduate education. You know, I had spent like six years in the city and I I thought I needed a new challenge. So I thought, oh, you know what? I should move to Lagos. You know, that's where everything is happening. Uh, you know, um, it's like when you're working in tech in the US and you're like, okay, you know what? You need to, uh, you need to move to Silicon Valley because that's where all the activities are. So it was like that. Um, at the end of 2017, I had I had the idea that I wanted to work on, uh, the idea of space in Africa. Uh, but I didn't exactly know how to build it. Uh, and I knew that I needed to be in an in like a, a tech-friendly environment like Lagos to be that. So at the beginning of 2018, I moved to Lagos and um, you know, I didn't have money. I was just like out of the university. And I thought, hey, you know what, I'm gonna build a company. But I was broke. So what I did was to get a job. <laughs> so I got a job at a games company, uh, you know, to manage their business development. And, um, you know, while working on the job, so I was working on space in Africa on the side. So, you know, I started space in Africa by just, you know, I bought a domain name. I started a website and, you know, I started like connecting the dots and, um, so I was in there on the side and I, 
I was working this full-time job. Um, and I did that for the next seven months. So for like seven months, I was working on my startup on the side and I was working full-time with this company. Um, so the idea was that I was gonna save some money from this company from working for this company, um, you know, that I can use to run my startup full time. So within the seven months, the feedback from, you know, people was great at the startup. They were like, oh yeah, you're building something cool. So it was kind of like motivating. So eventually I resigned from the company I was working with and I started working on space in Africa full time. So, but it was tough because for the next uh, eight months, we were not making any money. So for like the next eight months, I was working on a company that was generating zero revenue and I was burning like all of my cash. Uh, and, you know, I did that for like eight months and was able to raise uh, some investments from, from an angel investor. And uh, yeah, so that was how, you know, started all of that. Mm, that's really interesting to hear how you were able to sort of persist and keep that persistence and like you said it wasn't easy and you were uh you weren't making any profit for a while so how did you keep yourself going and how did you know that even in those eight months that you weren't making money it was still something worthwhile to pursue and you knew that eventually uh, or how did you know that eventually it would turn into something that could be really impactful uh, first of all, I believed in the idea. Uh, you know, I thought that we were solving a problem and I thought people were going to pay for this. But the truth is, so when we started, we had like, there was like this uh, initial idea, but the initial idea was not making money. So we have to, we have to like pivot into something. Like, so, you know, we kept on like changing the direction until we got to the one that was, you know, reasonable and making revenue. Uh, so sometimes you, you know, you start working on a startup and you have to like rebrand and restructure your ideas. Uh, you know, so sometimes you do like market research and you discover certain things and then you change what you're doing to fit into that. Uh, but the most, but when you launch and you're like in the market, you discover, you know, I mean, if you look at a company like, uh, like Samsung, now Samsung is like, you know, world leader in electronics. Yeah. Um, but Samsung started, you know, they, they started the company by selling dried fish. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> so you can imagine, you know, from selling dried fish to like, you know, being, uh, being Samsung the way it is today, that, that's very crazy. So, uh, so that's, you know, that's how entrepreneurship is. Sometimes your first product may not make sense, but just keep on tweaking it to ensure that um, mm -hmm. it, it, the customers want. Now, if we think a bit deeper about the company itself and just space in Africa, I would love if you could detail more about the work that you're currently doing. Uh, what is the mission behind it and why do you believe it is important, especially in the African context? So the work we're, we're doing, like, uh, you know, analytics and consulting for the African space and science industry. Mm -hmm. Now, so first of all, there's like so many things going on in the industry that people are not aware of. And, you know, when you have an industry that, you know, there's like little or no information, investors will not want to put money in that. People will be skeptical about putting money in that. So what we do is to curate information and data on the industry. So this data and information are shaping what is going on in the industry. So it's shaping, uh, you know, the way government sees the industry, the way private companies see the industry, the way investors see the industry. Um, and so we're doing all of these also by, uh, you know, supporting government and commercial players uh, in the industry value chain. So, um, so just to break that down and give you like a, a perfect example of one of the things that we do. So right now the African Union has discovered that, you know, space technologies is very important in, you know, the, in building the future of Africa as a continent. Uh, you know, it's part of their agenda 2063 vision, uh, you know, to shape the, the, the continent. Mm -hmm. And so in doing this, they want to understand, you know, how space technology actually fits into this. They want to understand what the current landscape is uh, and, you know, how they need to structure. So they want to set up an agency called the African Space Agency. And they want to understand the best way to set up the agency to ensure that they're able to capitalize on space technologies to address, uh, you know, socioeconomic problems in Africa from, 
you know, from disaster that is happening across the continent to like, um, you know, food insecurity and, you know, different kind of problem. Uh, and this is the kind of, uh, you know, this is like where we come. So we're helping the African Union Commission to actually, uh, to do this, to figure out all of this. So this is like, you know, this is like an example of how we work with institutions in Africa to capitalize on space technologies to address uh, different socioeconomic problems. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I love how you're sort of helping to advance this work for Africa as a whole. And I think it sort of connects back to what you were saying earlier, how in college there wasn't really this um, sort of major for the field. And now you're directly helping to advance Africa as a whole in terms of this industry. And so I think that's really, really interesting. Space is a really interesting industry, as there is still numerous things that we are unaware of. So what are the new efforts in space exploration are you most excited about? Um, so I'm excited about, you know, global connectivity. Um, so I don't know if you guys are aware, but, you know, more than half of the world population do not have access to the internet. Um, so this is, uh, I mean, in the 21st century, access to internet is supposed to be like a fundamental human right. Uh, about 50% of the world population do not have access to this. End. So this is a problem that is now being addressed uh, with space technology. So you can just, you know, you can put a satellite in space and a satellite can provide connectivity over like, you know, a large area. Uh, you know, even in the US, some, uh, some remote areas do not have good internet access. So this is a problem that has been addressed with like space technologies and all of that. So um, I think I'm mostly excited about that. Uh, you know, because I want to live in a future where, you know, internet becomes like, you know, like, like a normal thing, uh, where people can have good connectivity, uh, because if you think about this, it has like ripple effects in different industries that are, uh, I mean, imagine, imagine when, when COVID happened and people were stuck at home and people have to take like online classes and all. So imagine you are living in a city or a town with, you know, no internet connectivity. How are you gonna get access to education? Um, and that's like the story of like millions of uh, millions of children globally. Uh, so, but you know, with more effort around space technology, problem like this has been addressed. And, um, you know, that's like the future that we wanna live in. Right, I think that's really important because, like you said, uh, there are so many effects of internet and why it's so important for so many people every day like you said mentioned COVID and how we were all stuck at home and so many people didn't have access to that connectivity um, even like children um, who were forced to go home and a lot of them didn't have access to resources that are needed and so I think that's really really important and it's really important that you're working on so thank you so much for sharing and then thinking back on your career thus far, what would you say is your most rewarding experience that has sort of validated all of your work and your effort? Um, I sort of like to call them sort of yes moments. Was there any sort of moment where you're like, yes, I'm having an impact. This is sort of something that validated all the work and the hard work and effort that you've put in thus far. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, let me see, I, I think to be honest, you were like, you know, a lot of moments like that. Um, well, let me see. Uh, I think a, a good example of that was probably in like 20, uh, was it 2019 or thereabout? Uh, you, you know, I was in like Virgin Orbit's office. Uh, so Virgin Orbit is like one of the, uh, one of the companies is manufacturing like some of these cool, awesome rocket technologies. And, um, you know, I, I was in the office and like, you know, giving a talk about what's going on in Africa with the space program and all. And, you know, that was, you know, looking at how we started, uh, you know, that was sort of like an, an important moment because, um, you know, now we're trying to work with this company to explore opportunities in Africa, you know, to, to see Africa can capitalize on these cool technologies to develop the space program. And, uh, yeah, I think that was good. Yeah, that's really great to hear. And it's so important to have moments like that. And it just proves that the impact that you're having is real. So uh, thank you for that. And then Naomi has one final question for you. What would you say has been the key to your success 
and to what has driven you to achieve so much at a young age? Um, I, I don't know if I'm young, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I sort of like um, sort of like think into the future. Um, so like I know people like make a lot of plans based on like what's happening today. Um, so you see people um, doing things based on what's trending today, uh, but I I don't plan for that. I I sort of like you know think into the future. Uh, you know, so whether, for example, you're trying to go into a sector, uh, you're trying to choose a career path and, you know, things like, like for a lot of people, they think about, hey, what's trending today? Uh, so whether it's medicine that's trending today or, and people make plans based on that. Um, but, you know, that's usually risky because what's trending today in the next few years, you know, they're not. It's like someone deciding to say, oh, yeah, you know, I want to study medicine today because there's COVID, right? Uh, like in five years, COVID might no longer exist and, you know, it might be difficult to like survive in that kind of industry. So, um, so that's it for me. Yeah, I think people should not uh, just make plans based on like what's happening today. They should like look at the trends, you know, over the years and um, and think into the future so that they don't get stuck. Right, so keeping that sort of a long-term mindset instead of a short-term mindset, basically. And so I think that's really, really important. And thank you for sharing. And then on that note, for our final question, what is your advice for teens who are aspiring leaders but may see the barriers in front of them, sort of what you had where there wasn't really a major or an interest uh, that you were interested in um, directly in college, but you sort of persisted past that. So what would be your advice for teens who may be going through a similar experience that what they would say is keeping them from their success? Yeah, um, so I think the world is uh, pretty much a global village now. Um, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you can always connect with people uh, globally. It doesn't even matter where you're starting today. You can always take courses online. You can you can do remote internship. You can you can do all sort of things. So I, I would uh, I would recommend that people take advantage of that. Um, you know, you should not be you know whatever like institution you're in, you shouldn't limit yourself to the knowledge and experience that you're gaining there. You should open yourself to. Uh, you know, learning from everywhere. You shouldn't just be learning from your professor uh, or like people around you. You should uh, you know, open yourself up, uh, be open to like global opportunities. Um, yeah, volunteering is always cool. It's always, uh, you know, an interesting way to build networks and meet awesome people. Um, yeah, so yeah, this, this will be my Okay, great. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. Naomi and I had such a great time interviewing you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for the invite. Bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bits of Business podcast. I hope you had such a great time learning more about the story of Mr. Temi Daya Onyosu. I know me and Naomi had such a great time hearing more about his story and interviewing him. And if anything, we learned that persistence is key and passion can overcome any obstacle. If you'd like to learn more about his story, make sure to check him out and make sure to tune in soon to hear the story of another inspiring entrepreneur. Thank you. Bye.